begin, ladies and gentlemen. This is Carlos says, if these walls could talk to her. And every time he started, he started just exactly the way national events start. Bayang Magiliw, first ang silanganan. If you take a look at Fort Santiago over there, the seat of Spanish colonial power, it's impressive, no? But it's just two, hour, two stories high. And if you truly believe that size matters, then you will notice that right behind me is the Manila Cathedral, and that's over eight stories high. So it's really a matter of asserting who is more important, the king or the bishops. I, I was the more mabait version, the more peachy version, and the less scandalosa version of the Carlos tour. So uh, I, I, I ran it several times. Um, he had sent me the script and it was really not a script. It was just almost like the uh, random musings about it. So I had to study it, um, put my own notes on it, etc. When he passed away, I knew that Parang is the only one who ever ran it. Um, and the only one who, would, who has any sort of record of it that I should let that be known. And then. Um, Viva Manila, Puesto Manila, they organized this together with you know the inner circle of um, Carlos' as collaborators and they made it possible for me to do it. Welcome everyone to Fort Santiago! I approached this as a performance piece, uh, as he always said. This, was, this wasn't a tour, this was a performance piece. He's not the tour guide, he's a performance artist. So I approached it with um, that mindset. And when we ended um, right there, uh, it's like my whole body collapsed, um, everything in my emotions collapsed. Kasi it's pattern non stop from when I, I was abroad when I found out and I was like crying in the subways of Tokyo in a Tokyo street corner and then I headed home and then it was reconstructing the script, it was attending the wake, listening to recordings, watching videos, trying to wrap my head around how to do this and do it in such a way that would be as accurate as possible but also not a copycat because he would have hated that completely. I was just in a heap of tears just out of fatigue and, and, and just recognizing the what an honor it was to do this. I used to work with Carlos Seldon. I was his intern, his forever intern, and I never stopped working for him until the day he passed away. In the foreground is a beautiful devastating American bomb. This was incredibly difficult, I'm not gonna lie. It's not because the material was difficult, but because the material was so Carlos. You know, this whole thing was his like, his, his like big love letter to Intramuros. So it's so hard to, to see it without him. And it was, it was difficult to hear his voice again because it's like all I want to do is hear your voice. All I want to do is see you again. And now I'm in Intramuros and it feels like he's around any corner and I'm just running after him. And it, 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 it was really hard for this to be the last one because, you know, this tour is what made me love history. This tour is what made me love Intramuros. And so being able to be a part of the last one was great but it was one of the hardest things I think I've ever had to do. San Agustin Church is nothing more than this. It is basically a jeepney. <laughs> and that's a great way to even actually take a look at our own art and architecture. He has this magic. And it... Yeah, and it, it was so hard to explain because it was, you know, he works so hard and he's so weird and he's so wonderful and no one can say no to him, somehow. And, uh, you know, we just, we lost that light. I don't think there's anyone else that's like that. I don't think there's anyone else that can be like that. I'm 
hoping what happens is that more of us will take up the mantle. None of us can be Carlos, but maybe some of us can be a little bit of Carlos. We need to keep walking. We need to keep going around. We need to keep bringing tourists here. We need to patronize other tour guides. Carlos never competed with other tour guides. He wanted everybody to come here. Basically, our own culture is a heavy mix of the colorful, the interesting, the many different flavors, and we mix it all together, and that's what makes it Filipino. Basically, Filipino culture is like a halo halo. He's not dead. As long as, as long as the people he left behind, we take care of each other. <laughs> we do beautiful things just because. We do fun things. We celebrate art. We make art. Um, he will be alive that way. I don't think he wants to be remembered as a dead person. He wants to be remembered as somebody who is full of life. And if we live our lives unafraid and untethered, then we give him honor. Then we honor his legacy. Mm -hmm.